there. Very nice. Super Bobby, that's bad weather out there, isn't it? It's all happening here. The tension, the drama, the buzz, the rain, the hail. Hail? Hail, Richie. Hail, Richie. Hail, hail, hail the great man. a hail. Unless he's named you, are you? Yeah, that's his name. Oh, sorry, Richie. Oh, I, these names all sound like swear words. Some of them sound like... <laughs> you, 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 you do a mean, Greggy. Oh, I don't mind that. Here we go. Yes, one is here. Tuesday. <clears throat> the thing is that what Warnie's picked up on is the what they call the cadence, which is the melody. You know, Tony would say, "Had he smashed that one right off the meat of the bat? It's going very hard and fast. They can't cut it off." And into the fence it goes. It was that kind of melody of da 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 da. So, so what is it you look for? When, when you're deciding a bloke is to be a subject for you, what, what are you certain well, of that, thing, I guess? The thing is, Nick, you and I were talking before about me being a satirist rather than an yeah. impersonator. So I have to try and get the voices close enough that people will happily accept that that's your Richie and that's yeah. your Bill and that's your Tony. I don't want them holding up scorecards on my accuracy of impersonation. So the voices have got to be good enough to to uh, for you know, people to accept them but really I just want them to go with the flow of the yeah. stupid story I'm creating and haven't I created some stupid Sensational, ones? Sensational, mate. It's been Warnie, fantastic. Warnie, Warnie, <laughs> Shut up, Bullock. The bird gets it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how many? That might be right. So, <laughs> how many of the guys you said you've met, Greggy? Have you met Bill and Chapelli and Rich as well? Um, Richie, I, I've got some lovely uh, letters from Richie from the early days on the embossed Benno and Associates letterhead. Uh, dear Billy, many thanks for sending me the LP. That's how far back we go. The LP. Uh, been listening to it in the flat door weekend and uh, some marvellous sequences and some brilliant production on the negative side too much swearing for the sake of it and a couple of voices still not right he reckons I couldn't get my Chapelli voice right or something but uh, you know uh, generally uh, Richie I met him at the World Cup in 99 and I'd never met him personally uh, in 16 years and I was standing in this little ante room about to do an interview with that's uh, Jonathan Agnew. In yes, England. In England. Yeah, yes, yeah. Uh, Jonathan Agnew from the BBC. And I was a bit nervous. And I just heard this, oh, yeah. All right. Well, listen, I should be home about seven. Okay. I look forward to seeing you then. I thought, that's Richie. Either that or someone doing me. And, uh, and I looked up and there he was. And, and I'd never seen him from the waist down. For 16 years, all I'd seen of Richie was from the waist up. You know, sitting here, welcome back to the MCG or wherever he was. So I thought, I'm going to have to do this. God, he's put the kids through school. I better say good day. So, so I jumped up and, and I said, Richie, some things you can't put off forever, mate. Billy Birmingham, how are you? And he went, oh, uh, Billy, what a strange place to be seeing you. Uh, and then he was kind of moonwalking away from me while we were talking. He had hold of my hand, but we were kind of on the move while he was talking. But, um, so there was no awkward little man no, hug? No, there was little no, no, no. There was no <laughs> man hug. What about a high five? <laughs> um, so well in Eng England, you know. They've sold well. Yes, all yes. The, no, all the I've got a very big, uh, mainly cult following over there. When I did my little tour in the UK, every man and his dog pulled out a little TDK cassette with handwritten 12 man on it. So the one thing I should have taken on my trip was an invoice book, it would appear, mate. <laughs> what about, uh, what was your favourite, who was your favourite? You know, when you, who did you really get into when well, you I sat loved, there and... <clears throat> I loved Richie because he was the first one, front and centre, back in the early days of uh, World Series cricket. And he used to ride side saddle. Do you remember Richie used to, <laughs> you know, he was sort of side saddle to the... I wasn't too sure why that was. But, you know, they're welcome back to the SCG or the MCG. And it was just, I don't know, I had this penchant, or penchant, of course, as Ray Warren says, <laughs> penchant, for doing silly voices. And I just found myself with my mates in the lounge room doing Richie's voice. And then I started to gravitate to Bill because, let's face it, Bill stuck out like yeah, the proverbial yeah. DBs. Shane Warne, the hero. I love him. I want to buff him. Get him up here. Did you ever giggle, like, doing something and say, I have to do that again? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, listen, I had, I had good fun. Uh, you know, <laughs> making the records. But the best fun, of course, was other people enjoying it. Yeah. Well, we all loved them. We used to play them in the change rooms. Oh, we used yeah. to sit there and have a beer at the end of the day's play and listen to Billy, the 12th man, and just absolutely giggle. We well, used to have Billy, Billy. We, we had to have 12-man parties. We, we Cricket <laughs> lovers. <laughs> in. Like, yeah, yeah. And a group oh, of us would get this. together with a few beers and, and, and something to eat, and, and on would go the tapes. Fabulous. Everybody could do that. We got lucky here. Look at this. Sunshine. Oh, look wow. at this. Oh, that's fabulous. The plan was to take Billy out to the middle. We were going to yes. walk from here. Oh. Um, out to the middle with Warnie and do a pitch report. Mate, you, how, long, how long are you up here for, for the test match? Yeah, I'm up here for, uh, for tomorrow. I'm doing some promo around Brisbane tomorrow. So, But listen, wouldn't that have been great? Nico just said to me, if it hadn't rained, we were going to go out pitch there report. to the centre. I was going to get the keys 
Uh, nice and flat, not much gloss on it. Let me see what with the keys in here, and I was going to get track cam happening, you know, with you Joe know, the we've got, weather wall. <laughs> we've got weather wall back, you know. Do you I know. Weather wall? I read that the other day that it, in memory of uh, 12 months of uh, Tony passing, you guys were going to bring back the weather wall with the famous player Coming comfort meter. <laughs> the player comfort meter, which I always thought was such a ridiculous <laughs> idea. I mean, how could a short, little, fat guy like David Boone be as comfortable as a tall, lean fellow like Craig McDermott? Don't it. rationalise it now. You've left yeah. it late to start making sense of everything. Well, I know, but I mean, I've tried to keep up with Channel Line's ever-changing technology, so I had the uh, scrotometer. <laughs> the scrotometer was... Here it is. Let's have a listen. I think we can hear Greggy at work, can yes, we? Yes, I think not? we can. You see there, you Let's humidity try. is at... Uh, the wind is coming out of the southeast. Just a little gentle breeze there, yes. up to about nine. Yes. The forecast maximum a pretty hot 28, currently 22. 22, how appropriate. climbing quite hot, quite quickly there on 35. So, the West End's going to back. The cracks are opening up. <laughs> love him. Oh, love him, yeah, mate. I, I miss him, him a lot. He really, he really uh, got the 12th man gag right from the start, you know. He used to he used to say, I just can't work out how we can't get any money out of the boss. And, you know, <laughs> where's, where's my royalties, he used to say. And, um, but he, uh, he really got the gag. He just said that I think what the, the 12th man's success, Tony reckoned, had had elevated uh, the status of not only the coverage but also the individual commentators. I, I, gave them a cult following. Oh, I think there's a demand, isn't there? There's a demand for a new 12th man, for Billy to come out and do a new 12th man <laughs> on the current crop of commentators. Everyone, well, there's I a demand for it. Well, I guess I need each voice needs on. enough more inflection. I mean, you, you you need each voice to be very different. Yes, and and when Tony, Bill, and Richie kicked off that, you know, the wide world of sports. Uh, coverage of cricket back in the late 70s you couldn't have wished for yeah. three oh, better yeah. voices yeah. and smashing baby and pretty. smashing baby yeah. i know slats calls but him smashing now that's smashing his nickname baby. smashing okay, baby well, it's, it's not a bit of a sensitive subject that <laughs> it's just just it's not just cricket we, we touched on this at the beginning you know the whole wide world of sports team has yep. encouraged you let's say you yes. we've we mentioned rabs but one of my favorites and i worked with him a few years back daryl eastlake kenny calendar oh, 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 here we go the shoes yeah, fans. <laughs> well kenny calendar was just sensational every horse on an issue name silver sovereign silver sovereign was one of those horses on my records and there's a trainer in sydney i think and he's got a two-year-old in practice called Silver Sovereign. So keep an eye out for that. I can, Mick Price, his name is. Mick Price, he sent me a message a couple of weeks ago saying he's got a two-year-old in training called Silver Sovereign. Okay. So keep an eye out for that. Rabs Warren's become one of the people's Rab. favourites. Rabs dead set in the Fairningham department. Oh, crunching tackle. Uh, he's one of those ones where I'm noticing how many people are yelling out rabisms across the road at me um, these days. I used to love Daryl East like that. Here we go. Oh, here we go. This <laughs> oh, is right. comes up the... Oh! A chance for me to get my voice right up to the top. Oh, and I can come back down to a normal level. Oh, oh, oh. oh sensational stuff, Jack. Yeah. We're talking about, uh, well, we're talking with Billy. He's got a new album out, Willy Nilly. Do you Willy write, Nilly. Do you write all your own stuff? Yes, I do. Um, and, some notes here. And, um, look, there's, uh, Channel 9's history is my history. I should ask oh, there it is. I should ask for a commission here. Yeah, here Willy we go. Nilly. You're the one who did it, Warney. <laughs> I'm watching this game, and Warney's carrying on about... He's thrown one of those willy-nilly <laughs> high fives. And, of course, that, that whole incident on my record was... Um, <laughs> Pakistani guy threw a high five and got his teammate right in the eye and Bill's going oh well, this is just ridiculous play by Pakistan they lack the experience to do them properly the high fives they're going to go around throwing them willy nilly all accidents like this are bound to happen and then, and then Wardy comes in and says oh he's thrown one of those willy nilly high fives and I was just putting the finishing touches to the record and I thought there's Very a good, good name for a greatest hit willy nilly <laughs> Where is Bill? How come is, is he is he crook or is he okay or what's happening? What? Bill's taking a bit of time off and is he's he? going to be with us for the Christmas test in Melbourne. He's hanging out a lot with Joycey, his wife. He yes. hasn't been 100 percent, so he's spending time with her. And but so he's he... not done. He's not. So, done. Oh, that's good. And he'll be in Melbourne, will he? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> It'll all be happening. The tension, the drama, the crowd, the buzz, the atmosphere. Melbourne, Victoria.